drivers, and supporters. The Susan G. Komen Race for the Cure and WTOL 11 Race Day starts now. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the 26th Susan G. Coleman Northwest Ohio Race for the Cure here in Toledo, along with Christy Lee and Andrew Kinsey, Tim Miller, yeah. I'm Melissa Andrews. Thank you so much for joining us. We're covering uh, 90 minutes here uh, leading up to the race, which begins the 5K race at 9 o'clock this morning. A lot of excitement here downtown. A little chilly. But guys, we know runners like cool Perfect weather. Perfect running weather. Perfect weather. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, as long out. as the rain holds <laughs> off, everybody's going to be good. This is the first time all four of us have been at the anchor desk, and we have all of our team all over the place out there in the field for this race for the day, uh, race for the cure day. We've got John Monk, Dan Cummins, uh, Chris Fisher. Staggerwall in the field covering every angle of this exciting 5k race and walk. It's exciting for everyone to be here each and every year and it continues to grow and grow each and every year. And we have our WTOL first alert drone taking a live look over fifth third field for you this morning. We have our Hope Village and Survivor Parade, which is going on right now. This Horizon drone getting these live pictures right now. We do want to touch base with John Monk, who is roaming around here this morning. John, where are you? Hi, Melissa. I was actually waving at the drone. I don't know if you guys saw me. We're here in Fifth Third Field. We're one of the coolest, most visual um, traditions of the Susan G. Coleman Race for the Cure is taking place right now in the outfield of Fifth Third Field. It is the Survivor Ribbon Photo Opportunity where all the ladies who are obviously wearing pink are the ones who have survived or are currently battling breast cancer are filling in a the traditional symbol of the Susan G. Komen uh, Foundation, uh, the pink ribbon. And every year they, they do this and they get a nice big wide shot and, and it just shows sort of the, the solidarity and, and the, the, the partnership and the friendship that all of these folks have who are fighting breast cancer together. Everyone here is supporting them and everyone here is uh, participating in the race to not only raise awareness, but to raise funds. As we all know, this is the biggest fundraiser for the Susan G. Komen uh, Foundation here in Northwest Ohio. We're gonna uh, mill about a bit once the walkers get ready here just north on Monroe Street, but I'm gonna send it back to you guys. Uh, you guys are near the, uh, the, uh, the starting line for the beginning of the race, guys. Yeah, we are. And one thing we just wanted to point out, I think is um, very emotional this year, is that the metastatic survivors are wearing the darker pink shirts. Right. Um, and I know Coleman, even nationally, is really trying to uplift those folks who don't necessarily consider themselves in the same position as a traditional cancer survivor. And even keep them changing the name of Hope Village mm -hmm. at the tent there. Because oftentimes you beat breast cancer time and time again, and then it comes back in different parts of the bodies. And so this is a great opportunity to keep them in Encourage, let them know that they are still true fighters. Mm -hmm. And they're all together here, even if they are wearing a different color shirt. Yeah. They're all going to get hope from each other and, and maybe get that hug from somebody that they really need right now. Quite soon, a lot of folks will be not too far from us down near ProMedica. Yeah, we're going to be tossing over to Dan Cummins, who's near ProMedica, to show us the course. Yeah, Christy, we are right on Summit Street uh, just past Jefferson. It's about a block and a half from the starting line. Summit Street right now with the wind coming off the lake, it's kind of a wind tunnel. So as the runners are going to start from that starting line and come up Summit Street, they're going in right into the wind. Now, as a runner, I never liked cold weather. This is going to be chilly today if these runners coming through here. But again, the temperature is still in the 50s right now in the 60s. I want to tell you one thing in striking me doing research about this event today. This is our 26th year of doing the Race the Cure, the Coleman Race the Cure here in Toledo. And over the years, the Coleman Foundation in Toledo has raised $4 million for cancer research, $13 million for support and helping people who have come down with cancer. Think about this stat. 22 women this week will be diagnosed with cancer. Five women this week will die from breast cancer. A staggering number, and we've got to do better than this. We are making progress, but there's a long way to go. But anyway, back to the race. It's going to start in about one hour from here, 930. But uh, we'll have more from here. And I tell you what, we're an hour from the race, so we'll have some great video for you right now as the runners come through here in about one hour. Back to you guys. 
All right, thanks so much, Dan. And we are uh, getting ready for folks to kind of make their way down towards the stage. They've been very busy with the Survivor Parade at uh, Fifth Third Field. But speaking of survivors, Melissa, you had a chance to talk to who this race in Toledo is in celebration of, Artina McCabe. I got to meet her in the studio. She is an amazing woman. She is a ball of fire and energy. <laughs> and actually, she came down to the Finley race yesterday to support those nice. survivors as well. Um, this race definitely should be in celebration of Artina, and here is why. Hang on. You guys ready? Cross the town. Artina McCabe is drumming to a new beat. Two years after her breast cancer diagnosis. Just is electric, full of energy, and happy, a rock for other survivors. But she wasn't always so bright. Woo! In fact, her diagnosis in 2017 brought her to a very dark place. I had um, breast cancer. I was a basket case. So I gave all my clothes away and everything because I just knew that I was going to die. Do you I regret didn't... that now? <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. She can laugh about her rash decision now, but at the time, Tina was depressed. I was sitting there trying to figure out why me. I'm a good person. I'm a nice person. I don't know what I would do if I had the big C. The killers, the killer C. And they found cancer in my left breast. I understand that this is a wake up call. Time to go back to Jesus. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry for anything that I had done that wasn't pleasing in your sight. How do I share this embarrassment with people? How, God, how? Help me, please. I'll wait if someone should read this. I want them to know I was a good person, loved by my family and friends and kids from church, my family, from coast to coast. Trust Tisha will hold the family together. This is scared Tina, not trusting God and letting the spirit of fear overtake me. Stop it, devil. I will live and not die. It was during her third round of chemo. Tina says her attitude came around and she began to fight. Through my family and especially my church family, my pastor just kept saying, this is not into death. This is not into death. That's what he just kept saying. I was in a fighting mood by then that I knew everything was going to be all right. Tina began working to encourage other survivors. I may not have gone through so much depression and worry and everything if I had known right from the beginning or if I had a buddy right at the beginning that would grab my hand or put their arm around me and say it's okay. That's why Tina's daughter says this race needs to be in celebration of her mom. People actually come to her and will ask, what do I do? She demonstrates a lot of strength in a, in a humble way where she connects with a lot of people. So she's always had that personality where she's bright, sunshine, can light up a room. She is mm, a fighter and very enthusiastic. Very enthusiastic. <laughs> I'm surprised that she sees me as the strength because I see her as the strength. Really? Oh. She didn't even know that I even submitted her name. <laughs> no, I didn't know. And it's a full journey because to go from her first race where it was more of a terror issue to now you're more of a front person for this third race, I think it takes everything full circle. No, I'm a little camera shy, as you can tell. <laughs> no, I actually do love it. Oh my goodness, it's such an honor. It is such an honor. And I just, I mean, I'm already a hugger and love to hug everybody. And I'm already a picture taker and everything. So it's just so exciting for people to see that it's a rainbow at the end of your battle. 
And there she'll be at the finish line, a rainbow of hope for others at the 2019 Susan G. Komen Toledo Race for the Cure, named in celebration of our Tina McCabe. For WTOL 11, I'm Melissa Andrews. And I can't wait to see our Tina today. You know, yeah. just two years ago, this race was really hard for her because she had just been diagnosed with breast cancer just two weeks earlier. Mm -hmm. So it, it really is a full circle moment that she's up there being celebrated. I just want to meet her so I can get some of her energy, you know? <laughs> yeah. And how sad that she was embarrassed about it she at was. first. This Would is nothing to be about. embarrassed about. Yeah. There was such a whole huge group, thousands of people here at least this morning, always have your back as well as Susan G. Komen. It was nice to see her vulnerability and open up about how devastating that diagnosis can be and that you right. can reach the lowest of the lows and share that and then come around and that's why she's encouragement and inspiration to all of us and we thank her for her daughter really was is. the one that uh, nominated, nominated her right yeah yeah nice job she on really that story turned that around she, she and all of the other survivors will bring a ray of sunshine because right now it is chilly let's get with chris vickers right now who is at uh with first alert defender this morning chris it's <laughs> it's runner weather but the rest of us are huddling together yeah. over here <laughs> You feel a little bit of that cooler breeze, but guys, it's going to get people going and grooving at that start line. It's so excited to have so many people coming downtown Toledo for the race for the cure. This is the place to be this morning, and we want to see you down here at the start line. Weather-wise, hey, let's go ahead and stay dry over the next hour or two. We do have First Alert Defender on out here. and Check this out. Our hour-by-hour -hour forecast shows we're going to have dry weather at the start line. Chance of a few showers going to come in a little bit later, right around 10 to 11 o'clock. You're going to see that on the hour-by-hour -hour forecast will flip on through. There's around 11 a.m. our better chance of a couple showers. So racers, we expect we're going to be dry. We're out here at Lafayette and St. Clair. We're going to get ready to cheer everybody on. Hey, we got kids of all ages out here as well. The energy, you can feel it. We're excited and we're going to be cheering on the racers, runners, walkers. The thing that strikes me about this each and every year, and as you guys said as well, Everybody has a reason why they're out here. Everybody has a story, and everybody really comes together to support this great cause. So we're looking forward to seeing you and getting this race going and kicking off our Toledo Race for the Cure. We'll send it back to you guys, and of course, looking forward to keeping this one dry this morning. All right, everyone's looking at Chris this morning as they go by. <laughs> yeah. Keep that rain away. Well, even the wind kicked up. We noticed them right. having a little bit of a problem putting the banner up earlier because that yeah. wind really is kicking up right That's now. That's for sure. All right, here's another live look downtown over Fifth Third Field this morning. This is our Horizon drone, and you can see the survivors getting ready to begin the survivor parade at Hope Village. Our coverage of the 26 Susan G. Komen Northwest Ohio Race for the Cure in Toledo continues right after this.
Welcome back to the 26th Susan G. Common Northwest Ohio Race for the Cure here in Toledo. Now, I think as I've been doing a lot of these stories, it's been amazing to talk to people who've had breast cancer say, well, I never had a prior history. I didn't even know that this can happen. Artina was one of the people that said I was healthy. I didn't realize it. So we want to give you a little bit more information this morning about what exactly breast cancer is. It occurs when cells divide and grow without their normal control. Ductor, ductal carcinoma occurs when abnormal cells grow inside the milk ducts but have not spread to any nearby tissue. DCIS is a non-invasive breast cancer. An invasive breast cancer occurs when cancer cells spread to nearby tissue or other parts of the body. This spreads beyond the breast and nearly and nearby lymph nodes to other parts of the body. This is called metastatic breast cancer, also stage four breast cancer. Now that we know more about what breast cancer is, we want to kind of break it down for you with the numbers. This year, it's estimated that among U.S. women and men, there will be over 268,000 new cases of invasive breast cancer this year in women. Of those cases, almost 42,000 women will die. In men, there are over 2,500 new breast cancer cases this year, and 500 of those men will die. It's important to remember that men also get breast cancer, right. and it's something that should be remembered. There are a number of warning signs, and they're not the same for everyone. The most common signs are a change in the look or feel of the breast, a change in the look or feel in the nipple, and nipple discharge. You know, each and every day, this war against breast cancer rages on. So many different components, so many people trying to bring an end to this. A major impact, technological advances, giving doctors a clearer view of the culprit. Take a look. First thing the doctor said to me, or to us, was it isn't good. Breast cancer survivor Jennifer Bowman recounts the moment that forever changed her life. Doctors diagnosing her with an aggressive form of breast cancer. Stage two, her two positive breast cancer. Obviously it was surreal. You don't think it's going to happen to you. Like many diagnosed, Bowman had no family history of cancer. Hers caught during a routine mammogram where doctors spotted the disease using new 3D technology or tomosynthesis. All the radiologists are unbelievably impressed with this new technology. We're definitely finding breast cancers that are smaller and would have been missed uh, on previous mammograms. For years, the mammograms only showed a two-dimensional image of the breast from two x-ray images of each breast. If you had dense breast tissue, which is what all this white stuff is on the mammogram, there is much more chance that the cancer could be missed. Prometica's Dr. Malcolm Doyle says the limited 2D view oftentimes led to a false positive, which is when a mammogram shows an abnormal area that looks like cancer but turns out to be normal. None of us can imagine going back to the old days with just the 2D mammograms. Over the last 10 years, the new 3D mammograms have been slowly integrated into hospitals across the country, becoming the standard of care. The woman's really not going to notice a whole lot different. The positioning is the same, and the time, even though we have all these extra images, the time to obtain the mammogram is not that different than before. The real difference is the view. The 3D scans take several x-rays of the breast from different angles and then creates a three-dimensional image of the breast, allowing specialists to see right through fatty and dense breast tissue exposing the cancer early. And the key with breast cancer is picking it up at a smaller size when it has an earlier stage and that gives the woman the best prognosis. While most insurances now cover the procedure, there is local help for those uninsured or underinsured through Susan G. Coleman, Northwest Ohio. Last year alone, the nonprofit funded nearly 900 mammograms. Do you think this relatively new technology is saving lives? Absolutely it is, yes. The, the old mammograms, even though they were somewhat flawed, were proven to in, uh, decrease mortality related, related to breast cancer. And uh, the data is still coming in from the 3D mammograms, but we're anticipating even, uh, even greater decreases in mortality rated breast, related to breast cancer. All right, so the takeaway here is early detection is key. An important fact here, we talk about Coleman and funding Coleman. 
They were able to find 900 mammograms last year alone. These are mammograms for people underserved in our community who otherwise would not have this early detection. So that's your money at work when you invest in coma. So important because that's the whole point is catching this early mm -hmm. because then you have the best chance of getting that help. The 3D mammogram detects it before it even starts to form. It's impressive. We right. have live pictures right now of the Survivor Parade, which is happening right behind us here on Monroe Street. You can see the banner. They are coming down to the corner of Monroe and summit that is where we are staged to start the ceremonies here of the susan g Komen northwest ohio race for the year let's touch base oh, right now with Chris Peterson. She is. Oh let's touch base right now with amy steigerwald who's at the cock and bull amy Melissa, I'm actually probably in one of the best spots in town because I'm right where all of the food is at. Take a look at the spread we have over here. This is all free for all of the runners and walkers today. They can come over here, fuel up either before they run or walk or after. I think the best part, probably these pink bagels are my favorite. I really need the recipe to those. This is all from Meyer, and we've got a lot of uh, different organizations here passing these uh, this food out to these runners and walkers. So if you are planning to come and run or walk, be sure to fuel up before you do. We've got BG members of the BG Gymnastics team, I believe, right here. They're being given their time this weekend and passing out things here. I've had a lot of people come up and comment about those pink bagels. They really are kind of cool to see. We're going to continue to talk to people around here and hopefully bring you more coverage coming up soon. I'm going to toss it back to you guys. All right, Amy, thank you so much. Uh, it is uh, already getting exciting here as the Survivor Parade comes down Monroe Street into a downtown sea of pink. Toledo. <laughs> a sea of pink, which we love to say. And our live coverage of the Susan G. Komen Northwest Ohio Race for the Cure continues. Stay with us. A, a grueling disease. Those that I know that um, did succumb to it, it, it was horrible. And one day, maybe all of the, the walks and the contributions will contribute to, to finding a cure for this terrible disease. Looks like we Welcome back to our live coverage of the Susan G. Komen Northwest Ohio Race for the Cure. Right now, Chris Peterson, MC, is on the stage welcoming all of our survivors, just finishing up the Survivor Parade. It just really gives you chills 
to hear yes. we are family yeah. and then yelling out 20 year survivor, 25 year survivor. Yeah, at the packet pickup yesterday or a day at Bronnie's Ford, I met Virginia Petaway, a 20 year survivor, and it's neat to hear her perspective. She said that she was devastated the second time she got diagnosed. And then after that, now it's 20 years later, she's still a survivor and she feels like it's her calling to give that perspective that when you feel like your life is over. Look at me. I've I'm survived for 20 years. You just heard it. 30 years survived. 30 years. Well, unfortunately, not everybody will survive right. breast cancer, and we are also encouraging our metastatic survivors right now. Metastatic breast cancer is a non-specific type of breast cancer. It is the most advanced stage of breast cancer and is considered stage four. This is where the breast cancer shows up in other parts of the body, usually the brain, the lungs, and other organs. Yeah, you're talking when it goes to the lymph nodes and most often the bones, lungs, liver, or brain. And although it has spread to other parts of the body, they still consider it breast cancer and they still treat it as breast cancer as well. We want to introduce you now to a woman who, although she is metastatic, is still encouraging others and giving them hope. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Isaiah 40, 31. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Darling Jennings' favorite scripture. They shall run and not be worried, and they shall walk and not faint. You see, Darlene says it's her faith that's gotten her through the past 20 years. Her journey began in 1999. I myself found a lump in my right breast. Darlene was living in Florida at the time when it happened. It was quite a, a jolt, you know, but um, I just looked up at the clouds, the sunny Florida sky, and I said, okay, God, how are we going to handle this one? She went through chemo, had a mastectomy, and exactly one year later, she found another lump. I had uh, 32 radiation treatments and chemotherapy at the same time. It was very rough to go through but we made it. Then the cancer came back in her left breast. It spread to her lymph nodes and bone. She had another mastectomy. Then cancer found in both ovaries. They too were removed along with her fallopian tubes. And it didn't stop there. The cancer then turned up on her scalp. The cancer's very quiet, not very painful for the most part. Stage four metastatic breast cancer, no cure. That diagnosis came five years ago, but you'd never tell by looking at the 76-year-old who's very active, volunteering with the Good Shepherd Home in Fostoria. I'm a fighter, I really am, and it's a good thing because I've been able to tackle this. Darlene says she's lost many loved ones to cancer since her journey began, including a sister, but she finds strength in her faith. You know, it slaps your mortality right in your face, but I don't dwell on it. I just ask God to use me that I can help others. And that's what she's doing. Darlene has participated in Susan G. Komen Race for the Cure for the past 19 years. This year will be no different. She also finds comfort in the services the organization provides, like a retreat for women living with metastatic breast cancer. And of course, all the research being done because of the race. Years ago, we used to think when we heard the word cancer that it was a death sentence, and it's not. And for my situation, it was a matter of my will to want to live. Darlene knows she will pass. She's already planned her funeral, but she tells me she's never going to stop fighting. You never lose hope, Amanda, never lose hope. Reporting in Fostoria, Breathe your hope into my spirit. Amanda Fay, WTOL 11. up the national anthem there that you just got to hear and we just that came out of Amanda Faye's story about metastatic cancer.
And we are half an hour away now from the start of that 5K run. It's just, uh, you, like we said before, you're getting the chills as you're seeing these survivors and all their family members that are with them this morning. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing to see all these people, the sea of pink, all decked out. And it sounds like she's getting some 5K walkers uh, lined up here for this. Yeah, and we'll be underway, and before you know it, uh, we have live team coverage that continues from our First Alert Horizon drone. You can see the aerial views, the streets in downtown Toledo filling in now. Each and every year, spectators, family, friends, they all come out to support the cause here for Susan Jacome in Northwest Ohio. Welcome back to our coverage of the Susan G. Komen Northwest Ohio Toledo Race for the Cure. Right now, you're taking a live look at our stage here at the race. And Mary Westfall, who is the executive director of Komen Northwest Ohio, is currently thanking all of the people who came here in support. I'm looking over here, beyond, and this is Owens Corning. They've got a whole entire team over there as well. So it's not just all these people behind us. I mean, this thing is huge. They really do. And my wife, Kelly, works over there at Owens Corning. She just sent me a couple pictures. <laughs> huge team. They are such a huge sponsor of the Race for the Cure. We just saw the Pink Panther walk right. by. Mm -hmm. He's a friend of ours as well. He's over by the stage right now. So, so many great sponsors that are here. Owens Corning, one of the biggest. We've been ones. giving you uh, a live look from above with our First Alert Horizon drone there. So you can see this sea of pink and all the people that have come to support or celebrate surviving. And we, at this point, are going to toss it over to John Monk. Hey guys, I'm here on Monroe Street at the corner of St. Clair, right by uh, Hensville, where Monroe Street is slowly starting to fill up. I believe everyone that's on this stretch are going to be the Family Fun or the 5K walkers. And as you can see, plenty of people slowly coming in, showing their spirit, wearing the pink. And I'm here with uh, Tara. How, how are you, Tara? Good, how are you? Doing well. And who do we have here to your right? This is Harper Ray. She's a golden Aussie doodle. How long did it take her to, sh to, to do this whole hairdo? Maybe an hour. We've had her for about a year, and I've been grooming her myself at home, so she's used to it. Is this the first time she's been out to the Komen? Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, how many times have you been out here? Um, about five or six times. And who are you representing here today? I'm representing my grandma Banser, um, Grandma Zigray, and Andrea Siliato. We love you, honey. <laughs> Why was it so important for you to be out here and bring your daughter and bring your pooch out here to show support? So we can uh, talk about cancer and let everybody be aware of it and give love to everybody that's fighting. 
and show our support for everybody. Now, are you walking or running with your dog? We're walking. We're walking. All right. Well, good luck, and uh, thank you for coming out and showing your support. And as you can see, Monroe Street is slowly filling up. And uh, in case anyone uh, doesn't have any pink on, there's a guy roaming around with a wagon full of pink handkerchiefs. He's throwing them out like money. Man, it's great. So everyone is going to be representing the pink for race uh, for Coleman Race for the Cure. Uh, it's busy here. It's not so busy up uh, up Monroe Street right now or Summit Street, where my buddy Dan Cummins is waiting for the runners and walkers to pass by. Dan. Yeah, John, we're about a block and a half from the start up here. We'll get some great video for you when the race does start in about 30 minutes at 930. I've got two friends here, both breast cancer survivors. Give me your names. My name is Cora Orr. And? Lillian Fears. Come on this way. Show, show your pretty face in the camera there. Okay, uh, how long ago do you have breast cancer? It's been about 10 years ago. Does it seem like it happened to somebody else was so long ago, or do you live with this every day? Uh, no, not every day. It's been 10 years ago. How long do treatments have to go through? Um, I forget how many treatments, but several. This has to be a special day for you, it's kind of a celebration of your victory? Yes, it is. Okay, tell me, we, we talked a few minutes ago, uh, you've been cancer free a few years. How long has it been and, and uh, how bad was it? It wasn't too bad. I, I got it from my grandmother because my grandmother had hers removed, but I had a, I had a knot and the doctor removed that from me. And when you're here this morning, walking with other people, you see other women with the pink shirts, that's gotta be something special for you. Oh, sure, I volunteer every year. So you're, volunteer, you're not walking, you're volunteering? I volunteered at the Brondies Ford. Do you really? Every okay. year. All right. Well, have a great morning. Good to see you both, and thank you for sharing your stories. Thank you so much. All right. Have a good morning. The race of the cure continues. We're getting closer to 930 when the race will begin. Let's go back to the anchor desk. All right, Dan, thank you so much. We had an amazing race in Finley yesterday. This race is a little bit different. As you know, you guys have been there, right. and... It's much smaller, but much more community. Quite intimate as well, but it's still the cause is still great there. And each year you see some of the familiar faces you see in Finley migrate here to Toledo. <laughs> they say we need to have both of them because yep. they understand the need. They yeah. make a whole weekend out. Yeah. Right. They do definitely cross over. And uh, this year, Finley's race is in memory of May Gravit. And when I got to interview her kids, Shane and Jennifer, it was amazing to hear them talk about her mo their mom. She just sounds like the best mom you could ever have. And she was first diagnosed back in 2010, and then unfortunately her cancer did return in 2016. But over the years, she really fought bravely. She organized a team called Bosom Buddies. But And she was at the race um, last September in Finley. And I actually took a picture of her because she was just so vibrant. I thought, look at this woman, you know? But then, unfortunately, her life was claimed by breast cancer in January of this year. It spread to her brain and her spinal cord, and her kids said, you know, she never, ever wanted to give up. She fought right until the end, until they said that this was in her spinal cord. But um, she was just such an amazing person, built such a family um, there in Finley, and so the race was in memory of her yesterday. And when she stopped this treatments, the kids were in her corner they didn't want it to get to yeah, that, that point but they tough. they had to honor her desires and her wishes at that point that can be very tough if your loved one doesn't choose to go the medical route that the doctor suggests a lot of people may say i want to do a holistic right. situation or maybe not do chemo that can be a a tough thing for people to accept but they did they said we can't be mad at you for doing that so. an opportunity to cherish every moment and capture those memories uh, that they now have to cherish. And just as we do for the Toledo race, have someone in celebration and someone in memory of that was the case in Finley. So May was the one that was in memory of and we did right. a celebration. And the Finley race was in celebration of Jennifer Bowman. You may have seen her earlier in the show stressing the importance of mammograms. She had a mammogram when she was 38, was supposed to have one when she was 40, but she put it off for four years, which a lot of people do. When she finally had another, that's when she was diagnosed with the breast cancer. She went through chemo and this past December, she had just celebrated having her port removed, but then more spots were found, which unfortunately happens as well. But in Jennifer's case,
case, everything then turned out negative. Yeah. So it was quite a celebration for her at that point. And she's been very gracious throughout this process at all. And very humbled and said she was almost overwhelmed by that race in Finley being in celebration yeah, of her. Yeah, I saw her on the stage yesterday and she told Chris that she had been to the Finley race as just one of these people in, you know, the sea of pink. And she never thought that she would find herself up on that stage. Again, no family history. And the only reason she went in is because she was starting a new job and said, oh, let me go take care of this health stuff before I start a new job. And that's when they caught it. Whether it be breast cancer, colon cancer, any kind of screenings you're supposed to have, get them done. It is very important. And you might catch something you didn't know that you had. We want to take a look at Chris Peterson at the stage right now before we hit our break. And we will bring you more live coverage from the 20, uh, from the 26th Susan G. Komen Northwest Ohio Race for the Cure here in Toledo right after this. He also always has a bright smile on You know, when there's a storm, obviously it's our job to do what we do and do it in a safe manner. But I said, yep, Mike, check one, two, check one, two, check, check. Can you hear me? Check, check, check. Welcome back into the 26th annual Susan G. Komen Race for the Cure here in downtown Toledo. You are taking a live look at the stage. That's our Melissa Andrews on stage right now in front of uh, thousands who have come for this year's Race for the Cure here in downtown. We are just minutes away from kicking off the race here. And it's amazing how much, we have to say this because she just left us for now, how much Mel has done for this Race for the Cure, bringing these stories. She deserves time up in that stage to share her experiences. Yep. I had to say that because she had to go do that. <laughs> she might not <laughs> let me say right that now. if she was standing right here. Yes. And it's been such an inspiration to hear all of these stories and to remember our loved ones. Today is such a day of empowerment and inspiration. You can feel the energy right. of those around you, but it's also a very emotional day because we don't have all of the survivors here with us anymore. And today's race is in memory of Lola Harder. This is with you also. I yeah, think you that took that picture, the, Mary. It's been six years, but her absence is still palpable. Very special. Yeah. Feel blessed to have had her in my life. Me too. Yes. She was a friend to all. Lola Harder, a beloved wife, mother, grandmother, and always a big smile to match her larger-than-life personality. And you yes. couldn't get enough stuff on this girl. Yeah, yeah. she loved her jewelry. Big, big jewelry. We called her Gootsy Girl. Yeah. Gootsy hey, girl. yeah, and she said, uh, I, I used to call her white trash. <laughs> <laughs> she would always, she'd always have all this stuff on. And this is one of the things she gave me. Uh -huh. Anyhow, she said, now you're white trash. <laughs> and uh, it really meant a lot. 
He really did. And I wear it off and think of her all the time. <laughs> Therese Motter says Lola had a zest for life. She was a Christmas nut. Oh. <laughs> Everything in that house oh. was Christmas from top to bottom. I don't know how Bob ever done it. But he did it because she told him to. That's, That's right. <laughs> Bob and Lola were married almost 31 years. This uh, good looking woman come around the corner on Halloween night with her children and uh, uh, she was my little hobgoblin. It was history from there. Bob embraced Lola and her kids. A great person. She was as beautiful inside as she was out. Lola was a huggy person. You never left her without a hug. That's for and sure. She always would give you a big hug, which we loved. You know, that's the type of person she was. A loving person, an extremely strong person, they would learn beginning in 2012. The technician said, it looks like calcium deposits, but I don't like this grouping. And he contacted the gynecologist who told him to take a biopsy. And it was at that time we discovered she had cancer. Bob says they were terrified, but had a plan. Lola chose to have a bilateral mastectomy. Rose Butler spent the night after surgery with her. We cried, we laughed, and that was really special. <laughs> One of the best nights, even though we had many vacations together that I loved with her, you know, but that was priceless, you know, for me, and I'll never forget that night with her. Dozens of rounds of radiation followed, and then a clean bill of health. So Bob and his bride decided to take a little trip, but while on the way, a call from the doctor. It had returned. It had metastasized. And about three weeks later, she was gone. She's so giving and loving. We just miss her like crazy. We do. Was a, a hard fighter. She would never give up. A uh, positive attitude through everything. And I've always said, if I ever have to go through that, I pray I can be just like her and how she handled it. Because she... <laughs> She was amazing how she handled it, and she went through a lot. What do you think that she would tell us right now as we're sitting here <laughs> crying? <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, suck it up, I'm fine. <laughs> and I yeah. know she knows what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> She's saying, you go, yeah. girl. That's yeah. the way I was. <laughs> As their team shirt says, Lola did not lose the battle to cancer. God took her out of the fight before she could win the battle. And we will see her again. Yes, yes. we will. Well, that's all that matters. Lola Harder was just the greatest person to pick for in memory of because she really held that positive attitude to the end. I really enjoyed talking with her friends and her husband and it was grief is grief no matter if you suddenly lose someone or if you have to see them suffer and so it was a very emotional interview as many of you know i lost a family member earlier this year not to cancer but in a sudden loss and so just to have that perspective of grief in general and you know the healing that comes from just being able to talk about it um and i know it's means the world to Bob to have this race in, in memory of Lola Harder. And her family's on the stage them. right now mm -hmm. talking about her and about her fight and how we all remember her. And they received a warming embrace by this crowd. Speaking of the crowd, Christy and I are about to go out into the crowd so we can start this race about <laughs> 15 minutes. 15 Less minutes than 15 out. minutes now. Yeah. Right. We're going to get it over to Chris Vickers. He is along that route uh, over uh, near the Spaghetti Warehouse, big area of downtown Toledo. How's it looking over there, Chris? Hey, just call us the biggest cheering section just about that time that you need that little pick me up on the race course. We're out here with our iHeartRadio uh, media partners. We've got yep. Rick Waddell yep. from 101.5 The River. And Rick, this is just such an exciting time each and every year. Have you been part of this? You guys are always rocking and oh, rolling yeah. out oh, yeah. out here. Why is it so special for you guys to be part of this? Well, this is one of those occasions when you really, really get to stand up for people that are going through something that 
hopefully you'll never know how tough it is. But for those people that are going through it, for the survivors, for the family members, we like to get out here and support them. And sometimes just a cheer makes such a difference in somebody's life. I love seeing all the kids on out here. Yeah. Kids of all ages that are going to be running, walking, but more importantly as well, cheering people on. You love the uh, people all dressed up. Oh, yeah. Seeing yeah. it creative every year. Uh, you and I were talking just a minute ago. I love it. We're down toward the end of the race. And so when people are coming, they're still full of stamina and they're still all dressed. And I love to see the people that are going a little slower toward the end of the race so I can check out their costumes because they're amazing. So people go all out to support their family members, those in memory, and, and of course, the people that are going through the battle now. Yeah, we're going to be on the race course. We're going to be cheering yeah, people right on. Here. We're just less than uh, 15 minutes away from the actual yep. start of the race. Yeah, we're going to call call us the cheering section yeah, that's here. That's us. That's us. Stop on by. If you still got a chance maybe to head downtown, that uh, race start uh, is going to be coming up here in uh, just about uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Real quick, rain? We're free of rain. Oh, yeah. Till about uh, 10 15 okay. on the dot. Okay. We'll get that rain chance Very back good. into the picture. Still well over an hour away from that one. Yeah, that's been a big question. Yeah, Weather is looking great, especially as we head towards the start of the race for the cure. We'll set it back over to you guys at the desk. All right, Chris, thanks so much. We are getting those runners in place for the start of the 26th. Susan G. Coleman, Northwest Ohio, Race for the Cure. Our live coverage continues right after this. It's the, I, the awareness that y'all put out there now, and I mean, it's wonderful. I participate every year. You know, um, it's a blessing because I can tell you about, I want to say 10 years ago, I had a scare, and at the time I didn't have insurance. So it was a help for me to get that test done and everything. So it, it, it really does help people that are in need. It really does. Yeah, yeah, that was me. Is there a way we're going to be like live in like two minutes? Yeah. Can I reference? Check, mic check, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hello, 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 hello. Okay. Hello, 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 hello. Mic check, don't you want? And welcome back to our coverage of the 26th Race for the Cure here. Susan G. Coleman, of course, an amazing event here in downtown Toledo. Melissa back with us. Andrew and Christy have moved on to the starting line because we are now about seven minutes away from the beginning of this race. And I've got my kids up here trying to hold up our more than pink <laughs> sign because we started our own team this year to welcome people who may not have a team to walk with. So we've got a couple dozen people signed up for that. We're meeting right here in front of Owens Corning. Um, also, we've got Amy Steigerwald, who is over by Fifth Third Field this morning. Amy, what are you checking out over there? You know, Melissa, I've been kind of walking around over the past hour or so, and one thing that I've really been seeing a lot of dogs, and this dog just might win the award for best dressed here at the race today. This is Shiloh, and he's got pink paws, a nice pink hat. He's kind of moving around, so I hope you all can see him. But that pink tail, I mean, come on. 
so cute, so fluffy. And his owners are walking for some some special friend, is that right? That's correct. Judy O'Valley, she passed away from cancer a few years ago. All right, and you guys are walking today, and is Shiloh walking too? She is, absolutely, every year. <laughs> every year, I'm gonna have to check back again okay. next year with right. Shiloh, but best, best dressed award definitely goes Thank to this you. guy right here. <laughs> I'm gonna toss it back to you guys at the desk um, down outside the race. All right, Amy, thank you so much. Uh, it is uh, getting much closer now. We're about six minutes away from the start of this race. And another one of our team members who is uh, on the race line is Dan Cummins, right? Yes, he is along Summit Street. Dan, these runners are going to be making your, uh, their way first to you after that uh, gunshot goes off. Yeah, I'll tell you what, it's going to be a scary shot when we have all those runners coming right at us and we hope they separate. You'll, you'll see what I mean in about 10 minutes. They're coming right through. Hopefully they split off and we don't get run over here. Hey, I'm with a bunch of kids from Defiance College. Uh, first of all, we want to be informal here. Give me your first name real quick. Molly. Josh. Taylor. Jerome. Grant. Jenna. Leslie. Mia. How about that, huh? What are you guys doing here? Ah, no! I got you, sir. Well, this is going well. We're uh, we're fun. We're helping with the service project. You guys drove over from Defiance today for this? Yes, sir. Okay. So what what's the plan? What are you doing today? Well, we're actually some of us are high school students at Springfield. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought you well, all went to Defiance College. Just, okay. Yeah. And you're you're helping with the uh, we're the family with walk. the race, the family walk. Um, they're getting the ready to get zone. started. The kids zone. We went out on the baseball field, and helped them run oh, around and stuff. Registration. Um, yeah, sure. we work with a program called Service Leaders at Defiance College. Um, it just deals with helping the community out, so we're, we're getting into that today. Anybody have a family member that's gone through breast cancer? I, my grandma went, had breast cancer. She survived, so, yeah. Yeah, it's a, t it's a tough thing. That's why we're here today, right, to raise some money for the Coleman? Yeah, all right. Thank you very much, and have fun. And don't get run over in a couple of minutes. I'll tell you what, go ahead and clear it. Let's show this shot down the street here. And the starting line is way down there, and they're going to come right at us uh, in just a few minutes. So, uh I don't like the sight of blood, so I'm going to probably hide underneath the truck. But let's go back to the anchor desk. <laughs> yeah, Dan, everybody is uh, stretching their legs. These serious runners yeah. hopping up and down. We've seen them running and getting warmed up, so they are coming right for you. The race starts in about four minutes. Yeah, the excitement builds as Chris Peterson, of course, getting the crowd going. And you can just, just feel it in the air right now, the anticipation of this race starting and of all the, the support they're feeling, all the hope they're feeling from the person next to them. Maybe they know them, maybe they don't. They're all in it together, aren't they? Yeah, that's absolutely right. And, of course, uh, Chris is revving them up. And <laughs> hopefully we'll catch the start of the race right after this break. You're watching our live coverage of the 26th annual Susan G. Komen Northwest Ohio Race for the Cure here in downtown Toledo.
And welcome back to our live coverage of the Race for the Cure. It is really building up now. We have about a minute and a half or so until this race kicks off and I can really feel the excitement right now. Yeah, and you should be looking at live pictures all throughout the race course, as well as the starting line, the stage, and where each and every one of our reporters is stationed throughout this race for the cure. Andrew and Christy are also at the starting line over there, and the race is starting in less than 30 seconds. Yeah, it is such an exciting moment for downtown Toledo. And of course, all of the registration money that folks have paid is going into that research, going into the support for all these breast cancer survivors out there. So it's a fun event, but the money is used for amazing, amazing purposes. And it's very important because some of the organizations that Coleman gives money to are the ones that are really making sure that people are fed and transported and they get those mammograms because we touched on this a little bit earlier. If they don't get the mammograms, they may put it off and then, you know, the situation can get a whole lot worse. So here we are. We're going to take a live listen as this race for the cure gets underway. Let's do it. Runners get ready. Can we have our folks who are holding back the line please move aside? Thank you to our ladies professional teams for being here. Runners get ready. Runners get set. right now it is just such an unbelievable sight seeing that gun go off hearing the gun go off and seeing everyone start down summit street lots of smiles and you just know they've been waiting for this moment and downtown Toledo has certainly come alive. And you can't forget that all these people who are currently lined up on Monroe Street will soon be taking their place for the walk. Right, we want to get over to Andrew and Christy who are at that starting line. Guys, did you uh, get through all those folks running past you there? Yes, we got through the sea of pink. We are seeing everybody pass us now. Everyone's in good spirit saying hello. This is what it's all about. The fog horn has sound and people are on their way. Take a look. They'll wave right at you as they walk by. A number of these return walkers and several of them are first time walkers out here today. Out here to support family, friends, those they love. G. Coleman, Race for the Cure in downtown Toledo. Andrew and I are in our element. We love the music. We're <laughs> dancing along with everybody else. This is a day of celebration. It's also a day in memory of loved ones. Emotional day, and we're all in this together. I love how it's a family affair. Yes. Everyone comes out for the event. It's not just all the pink, but so many get their matching t-shirts to honor their loved one or show support. And we are... Uh, some are walking, some are running, and it's just a beautiful day. Yeah, let's get it back over to Ed Sherhis. Melissa and Tim are back to you too. All right, Andrew, thank you so much. We have that 5K run has just begun. The walkers are getting in line now as well. We also have a family fun walk, so they have a race or a walk for every category. Yeah, something for the whole family. We have the last of the runners that are uh, headed down Summit Street right now. We're gonna get everybody lined up for the walk and our coverage of the 26th Susan G. Coleman Northwest Ohio Race for the Cure continues right after this.
Yes, yes, yes. Yep. Yes, we can. Sorry, what? We are back here in downtown Toledo. The Susan G. Komen Race for the Cure, 26th year for this. And we just saw the exciting beginning of the 5K run. And we have those walkers lined up on Monroe Street, ready to go. Yes, they're going to be lining up for the walk, which begins at 845 this morning. So about nine minutes from now. So we've got to get all those thousands of people <laughs> Uh, lined up and they are right behind that race for the cure banner and that's where John Monk is live for us this morning. John. Hey guys, yeah, we're, we're here on Monroe Street just uh, about, you know, 100 feet or so from Summit Street and just look at the scene behind me. Thousands and thousands of people are all lined up getting ready for this uh, family fun walk portion of the Susan G. Komen race for the cure and uh, sir. How are you today? What's your name? All right, Calvin Rogers. And who are you, who are you here representing today? I'm here representing my mother. Uh, she's a 15-year survivor and also some memories of my aunt and some other church members and things like that. What about this experience it, it brings you out uh, to, to sort of celebrate the lives of people who are fighting it and surviving breast cancer? I just like the, the idea that we get to celebrate. It's a recognition of the fight that is to come and the ones that have achieved it. Um, it's just a, a, a overall good feeling. You see all the people, the, the energy. It's nice to get away from uh, just the you know, the, the sadness and cancer, yeah. but to celebrate. Well, uh, thank you for talking to me, sir, and uh, congratulations on for your mother being a 15-year survivor. Thank you. All right, in a few minutes here, all these folks are going to start slowly walking around in the corner of Summer Street. They're going to be heading towards my buddy Dan Cummins, but uh, I'll send it back to you guys. John, thank you so much. Uh, great to hear from the survivors and their families. Uh, this is that day of hope and a day where they can really have some fun, too. Yeah, exactly. And for the newest survivors to also see those people who have survived for 10, 20, and 30 years, it's very important uh, to get these people together down here. And let's touch base right now once again with Dan Cummins. How did you survive, Dan? <laughs> All those runners coming right at you. You rock, little guy. It's okay. They all took off and split around us with no problem. Uh, I got to tell you something. The uh, the walk that they're lining up for down the street is total anarchy. The walk started right after the runners took off. Look at this. What's your name? Cheryl Morelli. Cheryl, congratulations. Thank this, you. And you say this sign is to the exact day. To the day, babies. Tell me about your experience. Yes, I will. Mine wasn't as bad as some of these girls, but I tell you what, if I could help any of them, I'm there. This has to be emotional for you being down here today. Oh. And seeing I, all, all the other people that have gone through breast cancer as well. I mean, it's, it's, it's soul crushing sometimes when you think about it, it but you got to stay positive. It, yes, you do. Two weeks after I was diagnosed, my cousin was diagnosed. After a year and a half battle, we lost her. I'm sorry. But, thank you. But yeah, this is emotional. It's not even the right words. Yeah. Stay positive, okay? Thank you. All right. 
Good to see you. you too. Thanks. All right. What's your name? My name is Wanda Merle. Are you sure? Yes, I am. <laughs> Wanda, what brings you down today? Obviously, a breast I'm, cancer survivor. Yes, I am. A six-year survivor. Congratulations. Thank you. How does it make you feel being in this crowd, being all these people today and sharing this? Well, being an Army veteran, I'm used to being around a lot of people, you know. And I thank the VA and my doctors at the VA because... Um, them encouraging me to have my mammograms and, and um, my treatment. I'm still here. Yeah. Way to go. You fought the fight. Yes, I did. Congratulations. More ways than one. You did. Enjoy your, <laughs> enjoy your you. walk. Thank All right. You. Thank you. you. Oh, I love you. Thank you so much. You're so kind. Look at this. And they just keep coming. This is amazing today. Oh, come on over here. Look, real quick. What's your name? Brandy DePeel. Breast cancer? Yes, sir. I was just diagnosed right. in um, December of 2018, and I just had my last chemo on Thursday. Congratulations. <laughs> Are things going pretty well? Yeah, they're going good. I got to meet up and do um, see when they're going to do my radiation on the 8th, and then we go from there. What's your name? Brandy. Josh. Hey, <laughs> thanks for coming down here today and being a part of this. Yeah, last came on Thursday. Are you feeling okay? I'm feeling good. My legs are a little tired, so we're going to probably cut off. It kind of kicks your butt, but the good thing, it, it kicks cancer's butt. That's the most important right. thing, there right? There it is. Right. Yep. Okay. Thank you for stopping Thank by. You. So many wonderful stories here today. It's a privilege to be a part of all this. And as you can see, the people just keep coming up the street. What an event this is in Toledo, the 26th Race for the Cure. Where are we going next? The anchor desk? Exciting. Okay, Part let's go. Uh, where you're going, right? Yeah, definitely. And it sounds like everybody kind of split up and did what they need to do. The family fun walk is underway right now. So all these people are now headed down Summit Street. Usually it's about 17 to 20,000 people wow. who pack Summit Street and Monroe Street here in downtown Toledo every year. And our Chris Peterson continues to call out the years that they have been a survivor. And that is so amazing to hear and, and gives hope to the other ones, maybe those who have just been diagnosed. Our Amy Steigerwald also in this route right now. Amy, where exactly are you and what a sight, I'm sure. Well, Tim, we've been seeing a lot from the starting line, but I'm actually at the finish line right now, and we've got a bunch of Northview cheerleaders here that are ready to welcome in the runners once they come back, and they actually have a special Race for the Cure cheer for us. Take it away, guys. R-A-C-E, Race for the Cure! How can you not love that? If you are a runner, if you are a walker, that's what you're going to see when you come through that finish line, which we will be ready for in just a little bit. I'm going to send it back to you guys at the desk. Thanks. All right, Amy, thank you so much uh, as we continue to see the runners. You know, some of our runners are pretty quick. So we will see some finishes there soon. Yeah, I was just posting to social media some of the videos of them taking off at the start line. Pretty incredible. And it, yesterday, I think in Finley, it was like 16, maybe 17 minutes okay. until we saw the first runners. So we're going to be there, you know, in about five minutes or so. Some of these fast runners, like we said, it's ideal running weather. It's cool. And I think they can run a little bit faster on days like this. And I think the weather's maybe gotten a little better. I think we started to feel a little bit warmer. The right. breeze has kind of died down a little bit. Let's touch base right now with Chris Vickers this morning. Chris, again, this has turned out to be a pretty good yes. uh, weather situation, at least for the start of the race. <laughs> Oh, this is, this is perfect. Outstanding weather for race morning out here. And I'll tell you what, we've got runners coming through like crazy now. They're making that turn right now from Lafayette onto St. Clair about halfway through, and they got some speed going here. Hey, a familiar face I found on out here, Matt Simpson with Lazy Boy. How you doing this morning? Matt, it's great to see you on out here. Again, you guys out here supporting something that means so much to the community as well. Yeah, we're here uh, manning the water station and just cheering everybody on. You've got your cheer section as well as these runners come on through. You've got your grandkids on out here, yeah. which proves this is a family affair. Who do we have here? Krista. Krista, you're nine years old and you are into cheering. Yeah. All right, let me see your cheer. Let's get this going, right? She was doing she was doing her cheer moves before that would have put us on the floor. It would have. I would have been in traction. <laughs> yeah. And you got Lex here as well. Lex, Lex told me earlier he's three years old. 
that many holding up the fingers there. Okay. Fun to have the kids out as well. It is. It's a family event, and we're just here to cheer everybody on. It's such a great cause. I love to see it. Also out here at the iHeart Radio spot where we've got all our radio partners out here cheering on these runners and telling them to reach their goal and make it to that finish line. Of course, so many people out here in support of people that have fought that fight before or some of them in memory of those that have lost that battle as well. Very emotional, very touching to see people out here and support it as well. I'd say everybody has a story, and I think that's true. They do, and they're just awesome to support everybody's given. It is. Everybody giving it, giving it their all on out here this morning. We'll send it back to you guys at the desk, but these runners are going to keep on coming on through for quite some time now. And if you'd like to get in touch with us on social media this morning or tweet or a Facebook about the Race for the Cure, the hashtag is Race for the Cure. This is such a social media event. Everyone wants to show off the pictures, maybe get a picture with uh, the Pink Panther or someone like that or, or a longtime survivor. That's the place to go, hashtag Race for the Cure. We love not only showing them during this show, but throughout our coverage all day long today. So make sure you send those pictures in. Yeah, and we've got our team still stationed all the way around the Race for the Cure. Right now, though, our area is clear. That's because all of the runners and walkers have made their way along the race route. Our coverage from the 26th Susan G. Komen Northwest Ohio Race for the Cure continues live right after this. Okay. We got our first runner. Our first runner. We got a shot. Christy, we got a shot. We got a shot. Here. Yeah, welcome back into the race for the cure. In 16 minutes, Just we've seen minutes, our yeah. first four finishers, top finishers in the race. They came zooming by. Yeah, they're zooming by, and we're seeing a lot of walkers come through this way, too. We have another finisher coming on. They have a warm reception with everyone here at the finish line and the cheerleaders. Lots going on out here. As we mentioned earlier, this is perfect running, walking conditions, low humidity, not raining, cool enough to uh, zoom through the race course this morning. It was quite morning. chilly this morning, <laughs> and the wind was kicking up. We had uh, goosebumps, but now we can definitely feel it getting warmer out here. It's turning out to be Those finishers crossing the finish line here. These are by far the most advantage uh, that these people know what they're doing out here. They know uh, how to yeah, run. I Let's mean, get you back over to uh, Listen, Tim. 
Yeah, well, they were saying it's starting to feel warmer. I felt that right. way too, but then I started to feel the breeze picking <laughs> up as well. So I guess this is what you get in Northwest Ohio here in mid-September. Yeah, the runners probably want a nice cool breeze after they finish up. You know, 16 minutes, that's really good for a 5K. We expected them to come in oh around that God, time. 16 minutes, How? that's like six minute mile. That's right. And how amazing yes. is it maybe to win a race like that and to always remember it was the race for the cure yeah. and you're helping. It's not about you winning. It's about uh, helping all these breast cancer survivors get that treatment, get that support and find a cure. We need to find a cure. Yeah. And Amy Steigerwald has been talking with a lot of those survivors this morning. Amy, where are you right now and who are you talking with? Melissa, the runner, the winner who won this race just passed me. If we're going to give you a live look at the finish line right here. He came across the race first. He is cooling down right now, but he has agreed that he will talk to us in just a couple of minutes. But obviously, you know, he's the winner. He kind of needs to take a break at this point, get some water and rest. But obviously, you know, a huge accomplishment, huge accomplishment to win this race. Thousands of people are coming out to run, to walk here, and he is the first one that crossed the finish line. So we're going to hear from him in just a couple of minutes. All right, Amy, thank you so much. And uh, they're usually very gracious and ready to talk after they win. Maybe they have to catch their breath for a few minutes. Oh, yeah, minutes. they're kind of a mess. Like, sometimes they've <laughs> got stuff running down their face. They right. can't breathe or, you know, it's very athletic what they're doing. I mean, these are some of the greatest athletes in the area. And a lot for of sure. times will win every single race that they run. So it's pretty remarkable. And sometimes they'll do the race the day before in Finley, and then they'll come here. And I, and I think last year we said, how have you recovered enough? And they say, oh, I've run longer races than this, but still that's quite an accomplishment. Now for the people who like to take a little bit more <laughs> relaxed approach, yes. there is always our family fun walk. John Monk is with some of those people this morning along the route, John. Hey folks, I, I was in front of the camera, but uh, then a bunch of walkers walked through, so I had to get out of the way, which is why he don't see me right now, but we're behind Fort Industry Square, where the uh, family fun walk is rounding the corner. They're coming down from Prometica Park and they're making their way back down uh, along the riverfront in front of Owens Corning Building. Um, and, and basically, we've been here for about five minutes or so, and it's just been nonstop people coming by. And even though, you know, they've been walking for a while, they're all really happy and really excited and, and really energetic to be a part of this, this big event that the entire community of not only Toledo, not only the greater Toledo area, but all of Northwest Ohio comes together for the, to, 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 to race or walk for a cure. So it's been an honor. This is my first time covering the Toledo race for the cure. I've done Finley a few times and uh, this has been a great event to cover. Really uplifting and more than happy to do this next year if my bosses want to have me here. So uh, I'll send it back to you guys at the desk. John, I'm sure we will have you back because it is almost life changing when you see this in person. You have a chance to talk to these breast cancer survivors and they want to help others, which uh, we, we like spreading that message as well. Oh, yeah, we've seen that with Artina McCabe. I mean, just two years ago, she, this was her first race for the cure. Two weeks after being mm -hmm. diagnosed with breast cancer, writing in her journal that she was so devastated and ashamed and she embarrassed. She got rid of her clothes because she, she thought she was going to die. She did. It was a terrible time for her. But then now, two years later, look at her. She's. <laughs> Um, in celebration this race is of her and she's going around giving hugs and just showing such an example of right. how things can change so quickly for the better. It is amazing. I mean, there are so many things I, I want to mention here. The money raised from this race, from the registrations, goes to breast self-awareness, mammograms, breast cancer treatment. I think it even helps pay bills because when you're going through this, everything really takes a downturn on your finances as well because you're paying mm -hmm. uh, medical bills and maybe you're not able to work during treatments as well. Yeah, and Coleman has said that unfortunately a lot of women will ignore these symptoms because they're afraid that they'll have mm -hmm. to miss work, they won't be able to pay their bills, and we don't want to see anybody do that. Let's get right to Amy Steigerwald, who has the very first yeah. runner, the winner of the Race for the Cure, Amy. That's exactly right. We have him right here. Tell us your name, your time, and if this is your best best run so far. Yeah, my name is uh, Justin Riffle. It was 16-19, uh, my best time so far this year. Uh, pretty close. I just kind of got a little tired there that third mile, but uh, it was a great race, great event. I'm happy to be here, happy to get the win. I appreciate you getting uh, a chance to come out here and run. Now, is this your first time running this race, or have you done it before? This is my third time, actually. The first time was for fun. Uh, the second time was a few years ago, uh, trying to win that one. I took fourth, so 
Happy to come back and actually get a win this time. Awesome. First time was just for fun. Did you ever think you'd win it? No, never. It's always been a very competitive, fast race, so I'm really surprised I was able to do it. Awesome. Any advice for anyone who wants to do this in the future? Just come out. Just have fun, even if you're not trying to be competitive. I mean, it's a great cause, so why not come out and just uh, run with some friends? Awesome. Did you run for anyone specific today? I don't have anyone in the family, but uh, there is someone at work, Jolene. Uh, she's uh, dealing with it right now, so this was for her. Awesome. Well, congratulations. Awesome job. And thanks to all of the runners for coming out, showing their support, and giving it their all today. I'm going to send it back to you guys at the desk. Okay, Amy, thank you so much. Congratulations for him for uh, winning the race and really for everyone who's come out today because we should all be celebrated for helping fight and find a cure for breast cancer. Yes, and that's exactly what's happening. All of that money is going to be staying here in our local area. I'll never forget to Amy Thorpe Wiley talking at the Coleman Gala um, about a year and a half ago about when she was diagnosed 16 years ago. She said that Coleman... Um, paid $375. She was able to get or $75,000. She was able to get a grant uh, mm -hmm. with the Coleman grant to get into this case study that ended up being one of the most common treatments for breast cancer right now. And here she is 16 years later. That wow. was hundreds of thousands of dollars that would have been in her mailbox. She would have to pay that money. Exactly. And it's, it's inspiring to know that that support is out there and help these families and these survivors through it. Our Dan Cummins has been in the thick of things. Uh, Dan, you were there just when these runners began at 9.30. Have you had a chance to catch your breath a little bit? Okay, I'm with Mariah, who's been waiting with her two kids. Mariah, uh, you're cancer-free how long? Three years. And what's interesting about Mariah's story is she's in the medical field, and you diagnosed yourself. What? how that come about? Um, I just had benign breast disease, and then all of a sudden... They turned cancerous, so I had biopsies and always got them checked out. And This is personal, isn't it? Yes. Mariah, thank you so much for sharing your story today, and, and I'm glad you guys came out today. Yeah, what, are you, what are kids' names? Elise and Weston. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, who's, who's cancer-free? For how long? Ten years. Ten years. Ten years. Big group here celebrating that. A lot to celebrate today as it's the 2019 Race to the Cure. Let's go back to Tim and Mel. Yeah, and they gave me a big all right, back live here downtown, and we have had quite a team working together this morning, bringing you this coverage, and they've done a fantastic job showing the all of the excitement and the color and, and everything coming through. Yeah, and we are looking live right now at our team and various pictures from the 26th Susan G. Coleman Race for the Cure. We want to touch base right now with Andrew, Kinsey, and Christy Lee, who are still continuing to see some <laughs> walkers come on by. Yeah, we have 26 minutes on the clock. A lot more people coming through now. You see the sea of pink people from all different walks of life. And yeah, many survivors coming through saying hello. They are happy to see this finish line and happy to see so many supporters out here supporting the cause of hopefully soon and very soon finding a cure for breast cancer. What's really special is seeing all of the ages. This becomes a family affair. I saw two little girls, they're wearing like the t-shirts and dresses basically, and the grandparents, because it is all about family. It's about the human element. It's about finding out news you weren't expecting and how you then deal with that and the support that you get. And we want to actually send it right back to Melissa and Tim. All right, yeah, it is super great to see this race. Another successful oh, year. Wow. It's hard to believe how fast it comes. I mean, this preparation goes on and on and on, and then the day of the race comes, and you just see it go so fast. But we know planning begins for next year. They've probably already been doing it. Let's get Mary, Come on over Westfall, in here, Mary in. Westfall She is the executive Are... director of Come in Northwest Ohio. Mary, we have about 30 seconds. Come on in. So... What do you think? It's over the top fabulous. So <laughs> many thanks to this wonderful community for rallying behind us. And WTOL, you rock in our world. You know that. And we've yeah. saved a lot of lives, but the dollars raised today will make such a huge difference. Such an emotional day, isn't it? How do you come down from this? Hopefully they give you a little bit of time away. We just start planning for next year tomorrow. <laughs> All right. Thank All right, you Mary. so much for joining us for a live coverage of the 26th Susan G. Komen Northwest Ohio Race for the Cure. We'll see you next year. Thank you.